G'day, this is Brian Midway. <clears throat> I've been talking in these uh, little series of, uh, of video clips uh, about raising up next generation leaders, that is this G, this generation, and next generation. Uh, and uh, talking about uh, how this came to my awareness, which was uh, through connections with um, the Korean church and seeing both the horrible crisis that's there in terms of young generation leaders, young generation people in the church as a whole, uh, like uh, you have to go and watch those videos, I'm not going to talk about it again. But, um, <clears throat> but here I'm talking about um, the idea that uh, God is restoring something. Um, and, and, and whenever we see a, 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 a blank space, whenever we, whenever we bust our guts and nothing happens, whenever we see something of the kingdom of God dissipating and becoming fragmented, we all always know that God, that God is about doing something to rectify. Something's missing out of the equation. And usually it's because we've, you know, we've just adopted our own cultural stuff and we've maintained some words and some activities that are um, you know, Christian and uh, Bible and all those other things, but we've, we've missed something that, that's really important. And because we've missed that, then the, the work isn't happening uh, and somehow the favor of God isn't there. And so we have to discover the heart of God again um, and understand you know, because there are things that we don't know that we don't know. And, and we can bolster our little world with some kind of success, gather a few people, have some meetings on Sunday, see a few miracles and all those other things. But it will not transform a community. It will not see the gospel proclaimed to everybody and it will not see that thing happening from generation to generation. If, if you want to understand anything about the purposes of God, it is multi-generational. It isn't designed just to happen in one generation and then fade out and then so, you know, sometime later, a few generations down the track, you know, God wakes up and says, oh, well, let's have another go. No, no, no. This is meant to be in every generation. It's just that one generation can't do it for another generation. One generation, this generation can hinder what happens in the next generation or it can help. And what I'm talking about here is something that's very <clears throat> important to the whole deal. And it's something that I believe you know, we carry uh, in Crosslink um, because we haven't got any history to defend. We didn't start with a revival. Nobody's name is the mighty name. There's nobody who you know, we have to tiptoe around in case we offend them. Uh, this, this bunch of people that hang out together and you know, hang out occasionally together, um, we have everything to gain. And the reason why God has put us together is because of what he wants to do in the future. That is what he wants us to set our goals on, what he wants us to set the sails. You know, you feel a, the wind change and you think, oh, the sail's flapping, what do we do? Then you kind of pick up that little, that little thing at the top of the mast and you see where it's heading and you set the sails again and whoop, you know, there's whoop. That's the sound. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a sailor, you know what that sound is, just a sail filling with air and then you head off in a different direction and the direction is determined by the change of wind. Well, you know, there, I don't know whether God actually creates a change of wind. I just think we sail out of the wind. We, we go and put our own settings on and we wonder why we're not getting anywhere because we, have, we can often find ourselves trying to sail against the wind and wonder why the thing is going flap, flap, flap and we're not going anywhere. In fact, we're going backwards. And so the only way to do that and the way that in every case of renewal and restoration and revival down through the history of the church is where somebody understood something of the heart of God, something of the nature of God, something of the intention of God that was there all the time and God didn't change and they picked it up and it's caused a huge ruckus and all those other things, but it does represent the heart of God. And so, you know, I'm, I'm in this business of trying to figure out what to do now that presumes the end, the end game. And, and, here's, and here's how I'm going to say it. And just imagine that we're going on a trip from Sydney to Melbourne. And uh, Melbourne is the goal. Uh, I know Melbourne people will feel better about that. But if we, we travel, we leave Sydney, so we've got a testimony. We travel down the Hume Highway. We get to Albury. Albury's on this river. It's beautiful, lovely, so forth. And we think, wow, this is amazing. We've got to Albury. We've come all the way from Sydney. We're not like we used to be. And Albury's wonderful. And so we think that because we're successful and we've got to Albury, that we'll just reproduce more of Albury. We'll have Albury everywhere along that perimeter. The only problem is, even if we're successful at that, Albury will never be Melbourne. 
You know, it will always be Albury. And that's why you know, we can have some modest success in some ways, you know, comparative success. But it's not the end game. And if we sacrifice the end game for some present modest form of comparative success, we lose the tournament. We lose the opportunity to journey with God because God is going to the end game. He has an intention. It is declared as simple. I'm going to talk about it in the next session, but you know, God is moving toward the end point and we need to move there too. And at the end point, God, God gets to do what God has always wanted to do. We understand what God's intention is. The kingdom of God has come. That's what happens in the end.